Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. Today's project is a heavy duty crosscut sled and I think you're going to enjoy when you see all of the things that you can do to make it really work for you in your workshop. Now the wood that I picked out for the front and the back of the sled is just simply a construction grade Douglas fir. Uh, it was an 8 foot 2 by 6 and I wanted it kiln dried and I hand picked it because it needed to be as flat as possible and I picked a piece that was remarkably flat and I tested it to see what the moisture content was and it's 14 percent so that actually works out perfect that's exactly what I'm looking for that's exactly what I need now when I got the 2 by 6 home and cut it in half and I checked it with my straight edge and it's I'm amazed it's, it's absolutely perfect so it couldn't have been better now the other side of the board there's a little bit and I don't know if you can see it but there is a little bit of a warp to it but it doesn't really matter because this is going to go on the back or the front of the sled so it actually isn't going to affect anything it's only there for stability so this one here the one that's most important to me is absolutely perfect and that's just what I need now this is the bottom of my board and this will be the backer board here this will go at the back of the sled but I want you to notice this little edge here I actually cut a chamfer, a 45 degree chamfer at the very, so this is the very bottom here and this will be the side so I've cut this chamfer just in the very edge and that's so that when I'm cutting if I get a little bit of sawdust or some chips in there I can easily brush that away and it's not going to affect the straightness and you'll see that once we get this built. Now the edges, the top edge of this backboard uh, it's already been eased a little bit but I'm going to use my hand router and just ease them a little bit more and that's what that router bit looks like so I'm just going to go ahead now and round over that top Here I am at the table saw and I'm getting ready to put the base down for this heavy duty crosscut sled. But my strips are a little bit on the thin side and I want them to be a little bit on the thin side so I, because I want them to raise up. I, want, I don't want them to bottom out on the slot. Now I've seen people using pennies and washers and so on uh, to lay that down first to, to raise these slots up but I don't like to do that because there can be a dip when you go along when you, when you push down to, do the, to put the screws in these so what I'm doing I'm actually, I've actually cut some, some cardboard and I'm laying that in the slots and that's going to give me a nice flat even all the way along it doesn't matter now and that's I've checked that it's nice and flat all the way across there and now when I put the base plate for the crosscut sled on this it's going to be nice and flat and when these are screwed to the bottom there will be a little bit of uh, a little bit of area underneath these uh, for dust and things like that now the other thing I've installed in here my crosscut blade and after I put the plate down on here and I have it fastened I will be using the blade and, and, and winding it up into the base of the crosscut sled uh, and I'll be using that I'll move that back and forth and I'll use that slot as a measurement to set up the backing because that's where the that's where the the most critical measurements going to be we'll show you that in a second well we had a little bit of a snafu with our uh, camera and uh, microphone which uh, seemed to die on us part way through this video uh, so we went ahead and we made the sled and we did all the video uh, but we didn't have proper audio for it so now I'm having to go back and reconstruct what I've done 
and I'm going to show you what that is so that you will be able to make this cross-cut sled yourself. So, the first thing that we did, once we had the blanks in the bottom of the table, or in the slots, was to put the base plate on. And remember we were using half inch, four feet by two feet wide, uh, good quality plywood. We then fastened the plywood to the blanks. And we did that pretty simply because we just lined up the back of the board with the back of the saw. We already had the slots in place and you can see them if I pull out far enough you'll be able to see that the slots are actually there and they're actually fastened uh, and then we just simply drilled we did some counter sinks on all the way along we did counter sinks on both sides and then we just put in some screws and when we were finished we were amazed at how easily this moved back and forth before we had made any cuts we found that this was was very smooth moving. Now once we had the base firmly attached and you can see the the blanks out there once we had the base then we put the front on and then we put the back on and we only attached the back at this area back here because the next thing we needed to do was to make a slot so what we did was we cranked the blade up into our into our base and we ran it across until we got a slot now we made sure that we didn't run it all the way we we left a spot here and we left a spot here so the blade only ran from here to here and the reason for this slot is now we're going to use that, and I'll show you how we did that, how we used this slot to figure out where this backer board would go because this backer board wants to be absolutely 90 degrees to this slot. The next thing I needed to do, because this back of the jig was fastened down with one screw, but now I needed to find the exact angle to fasten this side down. So this slot now becomes our measuring device. And what I've done is I've seen people put a, a flat board or something, whatever fits in there. I don't like that. I actually prefer to use two points because when you put something flat in there there's a chance that it can bulge so I prefer to use two points like that you could use a couple of drill bits would fit in that slot whatever fits nicely into that slot now you'll notice that I've also raised this up a bit and that's because we have the chamfer remember we put a chamfer at the bottom of this board here so we needed to lift the, the um, square a little bit above that because we want it to butt to the to the back of this board and it wants to be level with these or to be even with these two marks right across there and I've, I've already done this we've done this off screen so that when you set up these two marks like this these two little uh, sticks uh, and move this back like that that's exactly where this needs to be. So we already had one screw in here, so all we had to do was to move this back fence back and forth so it would be level, because we, we wanted, we already knew where this was, so we just needed it to be square along the back. And once we had that, we put a screw in this side, then we put another screw in here because we knew this part wasn't going to move, and another one in here and we did a test cut we took these out and we moved the blade up and we did a test cut and this is the board that we used that we actually made the test cut with and then we checked it with the square and on our first go around the this fence was off by a very tiny bit so we had to release the screws we had to release one two three screws 
and make a very small adjustment and then do another cut on this and on our second cut uh, we got this board absolutely perfect so that our, we know now that our cross cut jig is absolutely square so we can put a board in here like that butt it up to here and run that and know that that's absolutely square. I also want to tell you some of the things that we didn't do to this sled. Now if you look online and if you look on the internet you'll find a lot of these crosscut sleds have a very uh, a nice design where somebody's actually cut away a piece uh, so it looks very nice, there's a nice flow to it. We didn't do that and I'll tell you why. Because when we made this sled, we don't, we don't care about pretty in the workshop. We need something that's functional. And when we made this, we wanted to do two things. We're going to, later on, we're actually going to put a miter slot. And you can buy that material. You can buy it from places like Lee Valley, uh, from Rockler. And you can actually fasten that up here so that we can put a variety of different jigs on here to make this even more useful. But even before we do that, we're going to make a little jig that's going to fit on here that we can actually use as a slider back and forth for making multiple cross-cut jigs. And we'll show you what that looks like. And here's the little jig that we made up that fits onto our jig and it simply works like this if you want to cut a board and set it up and you can you can set it up to the blade you can actually even set it up to the slot in here if you want to do that then you can put a little clamp on it like so and now you could make multiple cuts with that so this was one of the reasons why we didn't want to sculpt the ends of this because we want to have other jigs and other plans for this and when you sculpt that you you don't have those options now the other thing that we can do with this sled that makes it even more versatile particularly on your table saw is you can put and you you need to have some kind of a wedge uh, like this or some kind of a a separate board than just your fence. Um, let's put that on the other side like that. And if you're cutting long, long pieces of wood, for example, you can actually use your your fence as a marking as a marking place. So you could move that. You could set your board to that up to that area and then run that through your sled like so. So there's lots of options when you have a, a sled like this to make sure that your boards are perfectly cut and to make it easy for you to make uh, multiple cuts and to make good quality cuts. So this is how to make a cross cut sled for your table saw and I think you get a lot of use out of it. Uh, I've been using one for years. This is a rebuilt one uh, with some new designs and new ideas that I wanted to incorporate in it. And I'm, I'm thrilled how easy it's sliding these plastic um, blanks that we made from the other video are working out just great. There is one last thing I want to talk about before we go. Uh, having to do with crosscut sleds, and that has to do with safety. Now, you can never ever be too safe with any of your tools, and the crosscut sled is no different. Now, what I have seen from time to time, I've seen people on some of these crosscut sleds, they'll actually nail or screw on little strips, uh, and the point of that is so that it's to remind you not to put your fingers down in there. I don't like this idea, and I'll tell you why. When you see strips like this, there's a tendency for people to always move wood out of the way. And when there's something like this, and you can't get your hand out of the way quick enough, um, that's why I don't like that idea. The other thing that I have seen, and I'm kind of okay with this one, it's another idea where they've um, screwed plexiglass so that you can actually see what's going on. And if the plexiglass is not too wide, what it does do is it helps deflect some of the chips from coming up. But I prefer nothing. And what 
the reason I prefer nothing there is because the safest thing to do with any of your power tools is to, when you're finished your cut, turn the machine off, wait till it comes to a dead stop before removing your material. And when you're working with your table saws, whether you're using your crosscut sled or whether you're ripping, the tooth height should be no more than a quarter to a half tooth above the material that you're cutting. So you don't want to crank on your table saw, you don't want to crank the blade, you can see this one here, you don't want to crank the blade, I'm only cutting, you know, I've got a little piece of plywood here, you don't want the blade at the top of the uh, top height all the time. You want that blade, you need to adjust that height every time you cut something. So in this case it's a half inch plywood and it wants to be just barely above the height of the material. That's for the optimum cut but it's also the safest way because you know you're not going to have a lot of blade above the material that you can get your hands in. But the safest thing, always, always, always turn the machine off, wait for it to come to a dead stop, and then remove your material. So always be safe and of course wear your hearing protection, your eye protection, uh, and always think about what you're doing. So this concludes our video on making this uh, heavy duty cross cut sled. It's a great project. You'll get years and years of excellent use out of it. But before you go, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. We also ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web. And want to remind you also that, there, that there's always an associated article that goes along with these videos. So if you look on Woodwork Web, uh, you'll find an article that goes along with this and it'll have uh, different uh, links and plans, different ideas. And sometimes we update those those articles as well. So you you may look at that article one day and then uh, a couple months later you might find that there's some actual new information on it as well. So good idea to go back and revisit those from time to time. So I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.